So as being a CBO, we had to undergo a huge change that saw the organization almost to the verge of collapsing again. 2007, you, you all understand we had a tough time in Kenya and we had done a nice project on youth leadership and participation that was supported by COVID. See young people now getting engaged, aggressive into leadership. Yeah, we want to be the leaders today. So we went to Matare, Kasarani, Miki, um, Karubangi, Babadogo, Utali Ward. We didn't look at the funds we had, but we like, say, how do we reach more people, even with little resources that we have? As long as we can be facilitated transport, we ask the young people there not to charge at the venue because we meet them at their own corners, even if it's it, where they call their, their base, we'll just go sit down with them and talk to them. Then what happened after the post-election violence, things did not work well, but we said, okay, we'll still hang on and see if we're still going to make it. It, it was proven wrong, maybe at some point. It didn't work. Uh, some of my colleagues when going to the bank after withdrawing money around uh, 97,000 plus to 100, 100k, they were robbed at a gunpoint. And so there's no moving forward. That's around 2008, March. It took us back to zero. People wanted to move with it and it didn't work. How do you engage now? How even do you tell your partners and donors that you have You've been kidnapped and robbed at a gunpoint. <laughs> How do you start explaining things? It was like a dream. This this hit us because you know it used to happen to so many other organizations, especially hospitals. Like most of the hospitals, which were almost raided every other day, provide international. Do my knees. And the doctor has been. Robbed. A doctor has been, a nurse has been gunned down. Coach was a little bit of. We had to learn the hard way. That was a hard way on us. Everything came to a standstill. And that was either the death of the organization. Of course, many people say, ah, Miss Kati Likufa, Waliba Pesa, what Waliba Pesa, so we are no, it's no longer there. I looked at myself and I said, no, mission not yet accomplished. There's a mission that is still to be completed. And this mission, I guess, going to school. So I had to take a bold step again. I had to go back, marshal some young people, like girls, and said, okay, what do you think we can do? It's almost like Miss Coach is dying, and I'm, I'm at the center of everything. Uh, what do I do? But again, I had to pray. Because that's the only thing that can give you assurance of where you want to go. I had to pray. And then I said, okay, I still have friends. I will not give up hope. I'll go to those friends, talk to them, tell them what happened and ask them, are we still going to go on? Or this is the end. So I didn't believe in like, get letting go because I was looking at the girls going to school, we've not paid their school fees, what do we do? This girl has to be in school. She's sitting for exams this year. So I said to myself, these kids, they still really need me. How do I help them? Then going around, I met good people, meeting the, uh, the former Shelter Forum CEO, Eric Makoha. I talked to him. I, you know, I was just playing, and I will tell you the truth. You either take it or leave it. You either in support or not in support. If someone does a mistake, do you abandon them or you help them come back to you? You either help them come back, and if they will not really be aligned to what you want them to do, then you say, ah, I tried and you can wash your hands then. 
But you've not tried and you just say, ah, I don't want to be associated, you know. But they are so supportive. And, and the late Odindo or, 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 or Piata, he said, ah, Amy, we work, we work out something. And I said, yeah. I came to Pamod, I found Jack, and I told Jack, oh, it's just, Jack was like, how much is the budget? Ask Kim. Kim can work with them. Eh? And, you know, I read. And they said, now we have to support them. And I was like, yeah, this is just what I wanted. And I told the guys, can you do this? Yes, they said, Amy will do it. I said, yeah. We had sleepless nights, of course, bringing this thing together. Around that time, we said, okay, fine. As we work towards helping Miss Scott grow, we have to transform it to an NGO. I was fed up with the CBO way of work. In terms of management, an NGO is more focused. You have to meet your targets and you have to report even to the government office through the NGO board. So it becomes more clear and roles are clear. And so if someone messes around with funds for the organization, you face the law, you know, accordingly. We, do, we did not want to encourage impunity among Eastern people. So we said, no, we have to instill some professionalism. We have to work accordingly. We have to report, right? That was around 209, no, 206, then to 207. Because I remember there was a delegation of Ford Foundation uh, president mm -hmm. to the center. But then, uh, actually, that's where things started going thick. You know, everyone was like fending for livelihood. We don't have, we are not paying. The people are volunteering their time and, you know, services to the organization. But then at the end of the day, you ask yourself, I need to close, I need to eat, I need to, where I'm living, I need to pay some rent. So where am I getting money? And you find there's, you know, like other youth are engaged in different activities in here. So and so is going to train and they will be given some stipends, you know, to keep them going. And you ask yourself, I'm here, but there's no funds. Then it means a project cannot really support the entire staff, like volunteers paying them. But you can be given some stipends, you know, doing some work. Mm. You have to, you know, from zero, from those small ages, you can, they can be volunteers to a, a certain point. Then from that point, where do they fall? They, they, they start realizing their needs. Eh? They need to dress. You cannot stop that. They need to eat. You cannot stop that. If they are young boys or young men, they will start engaging with, you know, girlfriend relationships soon. How do they, you know, relate that life in years? Yeah. They'll tell you, look here, I think you're joking with us. You either pay us to do this work or we go. Then you're trained by Umoja, Umande Trust. You're trained by Pomoja Trust. You're trained by Hakijami. You're trained by Kenya Human Rights Commission. You're trained by KMCHR. Yo, there's no employment. Just trainings, 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 and you hear. You train me in something, then help me perfect in that thing as I get some engagement towards it. If I'll be, if I'll be trained to train others, then I need to be attached to different, in the different centers where I can offer my services, then I get paid. So I'm ready for the market. But if you're just telling me, I train you today <laughs> in journalism, and I'm like, okay, ethics of journalism. So you've not realized what my needs are. And you're training me in this. What you're doing is when you're getting volunteers and helping them to train, we are training them to attach them to some, you know, resourceful engagement like that's when we realized no we can have djs we can train them on a tangible thing like from here they can get employed you can train dancers from here you can say we have we are a group of dancers and uh, so we are a group of dancers 
and we can engage different institutions, we will be paid. You know, it's an income generating, you know, kind of activities because when you train me and you don't give me an uncle that I can relate this training to an income, it becomes, it becomes, a, there's no point. Rather, you leave people start trying to think and they are wallowing in all those experiences then they don't know where do I place this. I'm a peace ambassador, where do I place that? But when you train and train and train, train and train and train, <laughs> and then what you're training is not forthcoming, ah, yeah, it's just like you're wasting more resources into training rather into building someone. So those are some of the lessons I've learned along the line. Like, how do you make a successful career from, you know, just a small thing. I believe doing small things, not big things. If you're, if I'm like, I'm a child-centered person, I could be trained towards that and then led to either work for a child-centered institution. And that in return, even if you'll be on an apprenticeship, you know at the end of the day, someone will employ you because someone is seeing what you're doing. At some point when we're doing our school programs, we sit back and ask the kids to take us, to, you know, take us through what they want, what the themes are they want to learn about, what is it they want to know about themselves. Then now we take it from there. We will talk to teachers, also train teachers to understand these children because children are coming from diverse backgrounds, from families that either did not have food, they are going to school, they have not washed themselves, so they need to be supported.